basketball game. You know, and, and every day, you know, you get these, these uh, books on the team, scouting reports. You get these scouting reports. And every day, you have to go through the scouting reports and you have to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the players, you know, to make a big difference uh, in the game. Like, if I'm closing out to a shooter, and I know he likes to go right, I'm not going to close out on his left side and make him, you know, go right. I'm closing out on his right side and make him go left. Uh, you know, there's so many things that goes uh, into it, you know. You may, day before, you'll go through a practice and you're working on this thing, with certain plays and what have you. And then the next day when you go up to shoot around, the coach may change it up just like that. And so you have to get it just like that. You don't have time for the sense. And I can remember playing with guys which are like I scratch my head all the time. I'm not a kid, you guys think, but coach called the play, called the play, and we ran the play, and he's looking at the play. And the play is for him. He's looking at the play. <clears throat> all right, get in there. Get in there. Do the total opposite thing that the coach told him to do. And coaches don't have patience at this level. You know what I mean? Because things happen so quick. So you have to be zoned in, you have to be focused in. You know, we sitting in the huddle and you should know your own play. Coach draws something on, on it and calls it what he called it. And we go out the huddle. By the time we took about two steps out the huddle, he asked me, what did the coach say? <laughs> Come on man, you're a professional. You know what I mean? So you have, you have to be zoned in on what's going on, you know, at this level. Because they don't wait on it. They expect for you to know it when you get in there. They don't have time to keep. You have to get it. You have to get it. You more questions? Uh, he asked me that I'd like to coach in the NBA. Maybe one day. You know, I, I would say never say never. I, I had my coach in the USBL. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, my experience. Uh, what I do now, uh, a lot of y'all don't know, uh, I work with the Knicks in the front office as an alumni relation, so I kind of deal with all the former players, kind of face of the, of the uh, team out in the community. So that's what I, I do right now. But I would say never say never. When I'm watching like the playoff games and when the Knicks are not in it, and I'm watching Boston, you know, I see in Doc Rivers what I see, what I'm seeing this team do. Uh, the year that they won the championship, you know, he thanked me for my observations of his team, the shoot things to him, and stuff like that. So I get kind of like doing the doing the uh, playoffs. I kind of get going. So, but he like in the playoffs. Okay, see. Okay, see. I'm, I'm from Oklahoma, so I'm, I'm gonna yeah. roll with it. You know, LeBron put put in work, and uh, but it, it, it's a great series. I thought I thought that they probably would. I, I said that the Oklahoma City is probably the sweet thing, but I guess I'll be <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Uh, oh, no question. Oh, uh, you found. Uh, that was just I just found. Uh, you know. But that's the playoffs, you know. You, you, you get some calls and you don't get some calls. But that was just all this foul. I was surprised that they didn't call, call it. But, you know, that's just the way the ball bounces. Yeah. More? Okay. Last one. Say it again. Yeah, I, I just answered that, that question. Yeah, I just answered that question. Yeah. That's it? Okay. Hey, brother. Thank you. And uh, hold on. Hold on. Sorry, one more. You're going to get opportunities. You know, you may sit on the internet bench and, and when you're in the practice, a lot of these guys in the practice, when I was in at Golden State, you know, I wasn't playing that much, but when I was in practice, when I was in practice, that was my game time. 
So, the starters was going to get it, you know what I'm saying? So, I was going at them like, you know, there was like no other. So, that's where you notice what you can do and what you can't do. And coaches see that. You know, people want to give Camelo a brief, this and that. But Camelo was a champion for him to get out there and play. You know, because players know players. Players play with players. And so, um, Camelo was the one who went to Coach Dan Tony and said, give him a try. Because he, he watched him in practice. He know what he can do. And once you get that opportunity, you know, you have to take advantage. I was the same way when I was with the Knicks. Same way. In practice, Gerald was going to get it. Trent was going to get it. They was going to get it. You know what I'm saying? So, and coaches see that. And so, um, how my break came about with the Knicks is when Trent went down. And so that brought me right off the uh, end of this. And when I got that opportunity, and my first game actually was against Chicago Bulls against Michael Jordan. That was my first game. So I was like thrown into the fire very quickly. And I was excited because this is the guy who I watched growing up and, and was it, watched every move that he did and, and whatever. You know what I mean? I studied this man. So when I got that opportunity to play against him, there was no fear. There was no, you know, none of that. It's like, man, I'm getting ready to get up in you. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was. And so, I remember he tried to post me up. He got me on the block. You know, Michael was like 6'6", six, six, about 215. I'm like 6'2", 180. And so he's posting me, trying to post me up. And I'm, he got my form and pushed him off the block. And he looked at me. And he said, before the night is over, you're going to be calling Mr. Jordan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he didn't get that out of me. You know what I mean? So I ended up having a good game. And so I think when those opportunities come about, you have to be ready. They could have threw Jeremy being in there, he could have done nothing. And they've just been, you know, a player that they just had to put in the play. But obviously he came in and he did very well and sparked the mix too, obviously making the playoffs. So those opportunities are going to come for, for, uh, for those players. But you have to be ready. And you have to show the coach that you willing to go out there and play. Okay, so I just want to say, fellas, man, continue to work hard, continue hoping this works out for you. If it don't, don't give up. Don't give up. Continue to push yourself and continue to, you know, get better at what Because when I went to the CBA, like, man, you're down in the CBA. You come from the NBA down to the CBA. But how I looked at it is that I came from the NBA which I wasn't supposed to be there because I didn't get drafted or anything. I just came in and did what I had to do. That I saw being there, I had to work on some things to get better in order to stay there. And that's how I looked at it. You know, I needed to increase my ball handling skill, my passing, everything. And that's why I took that, that year right there. I wasn't even worried about getting back in NBA because I knew I could play in NBA. I was worried about working on my uh, all my weaknesses. So once I do come back, that I was going to stick, and obviously I stuck when I got back. Okay? So work hard, man, and thank you. All right? God bless you all.